actually my agent Beck Smith said, oh, I know Willem Dafoe, I can just email him. <laughs> and so she emailed him, he said, this sounds really interesting. It was as simple as that, honestly. Um, don't ask, don't get. What is River about? Well, River is a, is a, I guess, a sequel, if you like, to um, the film I made a few years ago called Mountain. And both these projects, are, they're fairly unique. They are documentaries, but they're sort of not really documentaries, if you like. Mountain was actually commissioned from the Australian Chamber Orchestra. So it began life as a concert. Both of them explore the nature of our relationship to landscape. And in this case, rivers, this relationship that is essential for our survival in this case. So it explores the changing nature of that relationship over time and kind of asks the question, you know, have we forgotten to revere rivers? Humans have long loved rivers. But as we have learned to harness their power, have we also forgotten to revere them? With your collaboration with the Australian Chamber Orchestra, can you talk about how that actually works? You know, are you delivering a final cut? Uh, is it kind of, are you are they composing as you're delivering footage? How does it actually work? Yeah, it's, it's definitely not like scoring a normal film. About 50% of the score is existing what we call classical repertoire. So we're talking about whether it be Chopin, Beethoven, Bach, Vivaldi. And then the other half is bespoke compositions by Richard Tognetti, Piers van der Broek and William Barton. So what happens with the ACOs, Richard is a very skilled composer and also arranger. So in some instances, he might arrange or edit a piece so that it does work for the scene. So it's a really interactive process right from very early kind of rough cuts. We're working with them to place music. For the other half of the film, we temp in the normal way that we would, I would at least, in scoring. And then we work with the composers to create those bespoke compositions to work to picture. So it's it's a much more involved process and, and necessarily so because it is a, a, a very music-driven film. Could you also talk about Radiohead's involvement with River? Richard Tongetti um, from the Australian Chamber Orchestra has many interesting collaborations that um, and many interesting people he's collaborated with around the world for many years. And one of those people is Johnny Greenwood. And a few years back, the Australian Chamber Orchestra actually commissioned Johnny to write an orchestral work. And he interestingly called it Water. And it had really only ever been performed by the Australian Chamber Orchestra. And so um, Richard was keen to use, he's like, we have to use water. We have to use elements of water. In a film called River, he reached out to Johnny. Johnny said, great. And so we used it in various different places through the film. And then with the particular radio head track, we put this piece of music in kind of thinking, oh, maybe he'll say yes. And and I think because of that relationship with Richard, he and the band said, yeah, we, we, we think it's great and, and they let us use it. So that's the story of um, Radiohead and Johnny Greenwood in the film. With the film, how much was filmed by your team and how much was sourced by other means, news and media outlets, stock footage, things like that? We began pre-production on River the, the week that the first lockdowns were announced for COVID. So we had intended to shoot a lot more. What we found was that there was a whole lot of cinematographers that were also in lockdown and really not able to go and all shoots have been cancelled. Suddenly there was a whole lot of people with a whole lot of availability that could still go out into their own backyards, wherever that was in the world, and shoot material. So we actually commissioned a lot of people. What we found was that a lot of these people 
because of the nature of the kind of work they do, had seen Mountain. They're like, oh my God, I saw that film. I loved it. I'd really love to be involved. So there was this really openness and willingness to to be involved. There's a drone shot that is just incredible. How did you get the drone team to capture that shot? And how many times did you attempt attempt it to get the perfect shot? So the drone pilot on that was a Dutch guy called Ralph Hogenberg. And that particular shot was in Norway. And the thing that makes that drone cinematography really great is, is proximity flying. Like the closer they can get to the surface and the thing that they're filming, the more of a rush, obviously, the audience gets. And he's just really good at that. In the final film, it's set to this incredible piece of music. It's set to um, the Bach Violin Concerto, which was originally written by Bach um, as a solo violin concerto. And Richard Tongetti rearranged it to be for the whole orchestra. I had actually had a piece of Johnny Greenwood originally on that that I was like not wanting to let go of. But actually, when Richard did this arrangement and put it there, it was the most extraordinary pairing of spark to any kind of cinematography that I'd ever seen and every time I watch it I get I still get goosebumps. It's a really amazing shot and it tells the story of rivers from glacier as it's melting and then joining the river. It's it's a really special shot. Within the documentary watching it you really see the human impact on the environment and the rivers. What impact do you hope that your film will have particularly you know for any kind of change going forward i think we have a really clear objective with a project like this it's it's um similar to probably robert mcfarlane's work and his aim with his work it is to provide the audience with an encounter in nature so often so many of us myself included are, you know sitting behind desks in front of computers and 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 we don't connect with nature nearly as much as we should in the ways that we used to I think we have lost sight of the role that it plays in our lives and our survival and I think the recent floods in Australia have kind of sadly reminded us of of that we really are at the point a tipping point where we are shooting our own selves in the foot by stopping the flow of, of these natural sediments down river by dams etc and we're, we're doing extraordinary damage to to the ri- river systems that are are actually keeping us alive.